It's finally over. Self-harm squad violence to Justice League is preparing to shut down. Rest in peace. Stop me if you heard this before. Executives at a game company see live service games like Fortnite and Destiny printing money. They look at themselves and say, well, I also like money. Hello. Like money. Tell that studio we run to make us that money. The studio in question has never made a live service game before, but gives it a try anyway, and it ends in disaster. That could describe a constantly growing pile of ambitious games that have tarnished the reputations of studios and led to the loss of many jobs, from Anthem to Marvel's Avengers, and now most recently, Suicide Squad. Worst case scenario, the entire studio closes, like what happened with Redfall and Arcane Austin. Best case, the studio comes to its senses, cancels it, and moves on to what they're good at, like Naughty Dog with The Last of Us Factions. But despite rumors circulated by internet grifters, Rocksteady will not end up like Arcane Austin with a studio closure. Earlier today, Suicide Squad received some of the worst news a struggling game could receive, a behind the scenes article from the legendary Jason Schreier. He's previously shed light on what happened behind the scenes of other video game disasters, like the launch of Cyberpunk 2077, and now it's Rocksteady's turn. The article, which Jason reportedly pieced together based on dozens of interviews with people at the company reads like every live service failure you've heard before. The most surprising bit was that even Jason couldn't actually find out what the budget was for Suicide Squad and how much money it made since launch, instead deciding to double down on the misinformation being spread about the earnings call confirming the game was a $200 million loss. In fact, Jason's own article debunks this claim. The $200 million figure represents how much WB fell short of their estimated revenue goal based on every single single game they have combined during the quarter. And according to Jason, those WB execs hilariously thought the Suicide Squad game by itself was going to make them a billion dollars. <laughs> However, WB had much less to do with the failure of Suicide Squad than you think. Perhaps the most important thing this article did was remind everyone that games don't just fail because big publishers like EA or Warner Brothers force talented devs to do stupid things in pursuit of profit. Games turn out bad when you have studio leadership that doesn't know what they're doing. And that's reportedly what happened with Suicide Squad. Jason paints beloved Rocksteady founders and masterminds of the Arkham franchise as clueless and incompetent leaders just like management on the Redfall project. Originally, Jamie and Sefton didn't want to make another superhero game. They had the studio working on an original multiplayer puzzle game that honestly sounded terrible, and people familiar with it agreed. But when WB came with the Suicide Squad pitch in order to capitalize on the success of the Will Smith and Margot Robbie movie, they made the pivot, but in the dumbest way possible. Jamie and Sefton didn't tell new hires what game they were working on, so people would quit after finding out they were hired by Rocksteady to make a live service multiplayer game. Devs would have to wait months for feedback from Jamie and Sefton on their work, leading to delays and backlogs. They also described the company as a place of toxic positivity where criticism of any kind was not allowed. Jamie and Sefton also admittedly did no research on other live service games like Destiny and would pitch terrible ideas like a vehicle system that ultimately got scrapped after months of work. A popular theory on the internet was that consultant group Sweet Baby Inc. was responsible for the downfall of the game, making it worse in pursuit of spreading their political activism and basically wrote the game themselves. Jason, however, debunked this narrative and denied they were responsible for the failure of the game. And while it's definitely true that political activism played a role in some of the game's more bizarre decisions, which will become clear when they reveal season two, ultimately, this game failed because of the leadership. That story you hate came from Sefton Hill, who was heavily inspired by Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. And not having a clear vision, like pivoting from Melee to gun combat sabotage the game's potential. Fortunately, this doesn't appear like it will end like so many other failed games before it, with Rocksteady having mass layoffs and the studio closing. According to Jason, WB is investing big into their game division and actually considers Rocksteady understaffed compared to other AAA studios so they don't see the logic in laying people off. This is where the bad news comes in if you actually enjoyed Suicide Squad. Reportedly, the studio is working on other projects with leadership currently pitching a single player game that 
would allow Rocksteady to return to what they do best. A skeleton crew is being left behind to finish up Suicide Squad, which is obvious if you notice the lack of cosmetics in the marketplace and the recent announcement their weekly dev blogs were being canceled. Reportedly, content they have ready will still be released, but not as much as they originally planned, meaning the game might shut down before we even get to season four. And after seeing what they have planned for season two, it might actually just end there. Now, according to industry insider Miller Ross, who has been data mining the patches, it appears the plan might be to just scrap a bunch of content between the remaining seasons so they can wrap up the story faster. It's a shame, really, because the idea of the game had some potential. If they had hired competent people People with experience in the genre, this game could have been great, but will instead go down as another failed attempt at a multiplayer superhero experience. Fortunately, there are some single player superhero games that look much more promising, and we could get as many as seven of them at tomorrow's Summer Game Fest. Click the video on screen to learn more.